We spent the autumn season exploring free camps around the state of Victoria. It brought some highs, a bunch of lows, lots of water, and a ton of s'mores. And just like our last series, we wanted a space where you could watch them all at once and have a little binge session. But don't forget to stick around to the end for a recap from us, including our favorite campsite and a little sneak peek of what we're up to next. Hey Jamie, have you seen the news lately? Good evening, it's a record we didn't want. Inflation has today hit its highest level since 1990. I think we need to rework the budget. Sometimes you just want to get away for a few days, but you don't want to spend an arm and a leg to enjoy nature. We just spent our summer exploring some pretty awesome hip campsites around the state, but now... We want to know just how good we can get it for as little money as possible. I mean, have you seen the price of fruit lately? So get ready, because today we are kicking off the start of our free camping series. And we're starting with Lake Barham Bay. What are you doing? Nothing. Doug. Ew! There were some weird noises on the path when we were walking down. Something so is alive in those something bushes. Something big is walking through the bushes. So the one thing that we don't like about free camping is that it's first come first serve. So you just don't know what you're gonna get and that's why we like the reliability of using things like hip cam. It really puts the adventure in DJ Adventures because you never know what you're gonna get when you roll up. It can be very hit or miss. And that can really bring an element of excitement. Not for me. Another thing that we noticed is that a lot of campsites are still closed. So they closed them all when we were in lockdowns and we've been open for a while and a lot are still closed. You don't even know who you're gonna pull up next to. Sometimes Sometimes you can pull up next to a bunch of knobheads. We, we call them yahoos yeah. because they're old. I want to pull up next to some grey nomads that are just taking it. Yeah. And on top of all that, it doesn't help that we are leaving late on a Thursday night. It is currently 7 p.m. We got a two-hour drive ahead it's of us. It's gonna be so dark. It's gonna be dark. We don't know if we'll get a spot. We don't know where we'll be parking or who will be there. And I just don't like that feeling. <laughs> see anything we're trying to find where the actual camp spots are but it's just so dark can you see anything not so far. yeah so who knows what we're gonna wake up to we just got here it's currently 9 p.m and we are settling in for dinner jamie's already hit the snacks no that's just, just cheese. A bag of cheese that's just cheese muscle chef <laughs> keeping it easy i think i just dropped a black bean this campsite even though it's dark looks beautiful so we are very excited to show it to you guys tomorrow yeah there was like a lot of spaces we feel like that there's a lot of like choices and options i'm excited to like properly see it in the morning i'm excited to like properly see the lake as well like yeah I hope it's like a pretty lake i feel like it's gonna be a nice a nice morning good morning morning guys the light is out we can finally start seeing some of the views out here but we are going to go out and get a first impressions of this place. So let's go see what this morning has to offer. Let's go. Wow, look at the hills, seagulls. So this camp spot seems to be along a road that is very accessible to all two wheel drives. And if you look all the way down the bank, you can see that this camp is all the way down there in the distance. And I would say that they're probably in the same direction on the way that we drove in as well. There are lots of spots here and they're all nice and flat. And as you can see, you can pull right up to the water. It's pretty stunning for a free spot. There's sand here. Like I feel like we're at a little beach. On a morning like this, you know that we have to walk into that water. Oh, yeah, it's not that cold. The lake is so quiet this morning. When we arrived yesterday, it was like crashing against the shore. It was such a nice sound. I love that sound of like a river, just any sound of water. I'm just like, I could live here for days. All right, I think it's time to eat some breakfast. And then once we get some full bellies, we can explore this place and show you around. This is on a road that is a public space and some people have brought their horses down. To sit here and have a coffee, warm oats with the sun rising and watching these horses splash through the water, it's feeling pretty majestic right now. Another one. 
This is so amazing. I don't even know if you can see them or we need to get a better zoom in lens, yeah. but it's just so nice. What an awesome way to start the morning. Oh my God, there's so many. That is so cool. Like our house is right here and we get to enjoy these. This We're is having breakfast with the show apparently. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. There's this horse out there named Eagle, and he is not interested in being in that lake. It's hilarious. I don't know if you can hear him yelling at his horse non-stop. He just keeps yelling, Eagle, stop it. I feel like I'm on a jet ski. <laughs> I don't know if the camera is picking it up guys, but uh, someone has spray painted a rather childish image on the ground. We were just walking around and saw this little spot tucked off into the side. It's a bit sandy. I don't know if a two wheel drive will hit it. Yeah, four wheel drive, easy. This is free? Free? No one's coming to collect my money? We are taking a drive through the campsite right now to just see what else is available before we head into town. A full on like coach bus. Yeah, there's just so many spots available for so many different types of vehicles. As we're driving further along the campsite, this is actually where Google Maps takes you further down this end of the lake. But we did notice there's a sign at the start right at the beginning of the lake and there were people camping right next to the sign. So it's probably a good three kilometers of lakeside camping for you to pick from, which is very generous. Unless you're coming the week of Easter, I feel like it would be really hard to not find a spot here. This is the second public toilet block that we've seen and it has this awesome outdoor eating area, which for a public space is lovely and clean. There's no graffiti, there's no cobwebs, everything's clean. And rain. Yeah. This is an awesome spot. And what I love that I keep seeing around the spot is that there's campfires everywhere that have been set up. It would be such a vibe here. We have noticed that the spots down this side of the lake are so much more flat, but that's probably why there's so many more cars here. So it's a bit of a pick your poison situation. Guys, it is so nice out right now. I'm so excited. And there's lots of birds, and it's just so pretty and scenic. Right now we're in the Botanical Gardens in Ballarat, and it's so pretty. Every time we drive past here, we're like, we need to stop. And we finally are! Got the great Australian caterpillar here. Highly venomous. Highly venomous. One touch, it will kill you Let dead. Oh, he's a cutie bird. There you go, little guy. I'll put you back in your den. Oh, mate. Unbelievable. What a ripper. The butts are going up. Butts up. <laughs> Their feet just dangle in the air. It's so funny. Oh my god, I could literally sit here all day. Ballarat Botanical Gardens, right next to the lake full of swans. It is gorgeous. The sun is out, all the birds are in the lake, the weather is perfect. It is such a nice vibe. 
I honestly feel like we could spend the entire day here. It's one of those days where I want to take Jamie and go get some fish and chips and yeah. just like sit here. That would be the best day ever, just saying. It is so <laughs> nice though. I don't want to leave. <laughs> Put a like in the comments. Hit like if we should go get some fish and chips. <laughs> All right, we were just at the lake across the road from the gardens. We have found the gardens. It's got a bit more of a garden vibe. <laughs> there is so much to see in here. Just We've just walked in and we've already seen like five different spots that we want to go and see. It's quite cool. It's crazy. Yeah. There is quite a lot to do. It starts all the way here at the old trains and then continues down to the bushy area. You could make a day out of it and then go back to the campsite. It's just... Yeah, it took us maybe 20 minutes to get from that campsite to here, yeah. which is really fair. Considering you could pull up next to a lake and then 20 minutes later be in the heart of Ballarat yeah. and have this much access to free stuff. Yeah, go for some nice walks, grab a coffee. It's a vibe, it's a vibe. I said do not touch the flowers, I didn't mean to. It's just so awesome. pretty, so pretty. So the first gardener of this site actually lived here in a tent with his family for the first two years of the 40 years that he looked after these gardens. Tent. A tent, here. The OG camp life. OG, right here. And back then, you know how many kids they were having, probably seven. <laughs> We're not going to be buying a coffee on the road. We're going to make one here in the back of the van, which is honestly quicker. Have you ever been to a cafe in a home goods store? I am so excited. Doug had no idea what we were doing today, and he's like, I thought we were going to a cafe. I'm so hungry. I am starving. I can't picture anything worse than a cafe and home goods. Let's go. I don't want to look at home goods. There's a sports bar around the corner. Can I go to that? It's in the budget. We spent $28 on two sandwiches and one chai latte. Thank you. This is cheesy. Worth the $12? Worth the $12. Wow. So we just arrived at what was supposed to be this beautiful river trail and it's all blocked off. Apparently there's a bunch of toxic waste that spilled. I don't know. Doug keeps saying that someone decided they needed to take a poo, but I don't know. So we can't get in, we can't show it to you, but it's here and maybe if you pass through, it'll be open for you. So come check it out and let us know how it is. Off to the next spot. We were trying to take you guys to Yuli Wetlands and when you type it in on Google Maps, it takes you to a block of units and it tells you that you have to walk through the units to get to it. But at the start of the units, it says private access only. We're not having a lot of luck today. We're just trying to find some free things in the area to share with you so that if you do come to this free campsite, you're trying to keep costs down, that you can do some things in the area for free, but it's really not working out. found it. You know, try not to be such a tourist, don't just look at Google Maps, use your eyes. If you land at the units, it's just too far. There is a sign with a dirt driveway that does bring you to the park, which is great. This was Vicar Street. This is now a block of units, but this is the sneaky little driveway. We're here now. Hopefully and no one's taking a poo here. What are you doing? Coming. Doug. Ew! How do you know? What if it's not a black oh, one? Now, what's great about this park is that it's got free food in it. You spent $28 on two sandwiches. I know, that was a waste, wasn't it? Could have just come to Yuli's, mate.
first impressions at the Yuli wetlands, it looks like when you first enter that it's all dried out. And we almost turned around because we're like, it's all dried out, there's nothing to see here. Mm -hmm. And then we found this beautiful walkway, some water, there's ducks. There were some weird noises on the path when we were walking down. Something so is alive in those something bushes. Something big is walking into the bushes. And I don't know if it's a person or what will be, but I'm just keeping the show moving. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. But if you find this footage, it was a great day. <laughs> it was a great day. We really enjoyed the few hours that we spent in Ballarat. It had a much more relaxed vibe to the whole CBD. The old architecture was there. Jamie didn't know this, but Ballarat used to be the richest city in Victoria. And I think it was once considered to be the capital city of Victoria because of course of the gold rush that happened there. So a lot of those buildings that were built in the, seven, in the 1800s are very well maintained and are very grand compared to the other buildings that you get in Melbourne, which are of course a lot more modern. For a town that has a reputation as such a small town there really was a very active and outdoor atmosphere going on there is that huge lake that's there in the middle there's the trams there's the garden there's the e-scooters that get you around town there's just so much to do and enjoy around town outside of Ballarat so it was a wonderful experience we really enjoyed the whole time all right so we just wrapped up our walk at the wetlands it was super nice it is getting like to the peak high temperature of the day right now so we have a drive ahead of us to get to the next campsite so we are getting on the road but we just wanted to share some things in the area obviously today did not go as planned but we're gonna leave a little guide of this area um, if you do want to check out this campsite and you're looking for things to do we'll leave all the places we tried to go to did go to um, and then a couple of things that are paid attractions that you can go and check out so we'll leave all that in the description for you okay with the fuel and the sandwiches I think overall we spent probably about $80 Which if we did not get that food we would have spent like 51 bucks so hopefully at our next campsite we can spend a little less but we're gonna be there for a couple of days versus one day so I think we did great for fuel and we bought a sandwich because we were hungry. That's yeah. pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. We definitely could have picked a cheaper lunch, but oh well. Yeah. Doesn't matter. We got we got the rest of the series to try and get this price cheaper. But we'll see next week if we can do it for less than $80. What do you prefer so far? Free camping or do you like the idea of hip camp where you are guaranteed a spot? Yeah. Because you might not always get a place that had so much room in it like we did in this episode. Or do you love just like a caravan park that has all the facilities? I know mm. some people with RVs just go from caravan park to caravan park. So that might be your vibe as well. If you are in Victoria or you know any free camps in the area, definitely let us know in the comments because we we just might add it to the series. Now we are getting back on the road to head to our next campsite. So how cheap is free camping actually? And is it worth it? I mean, you have very little control over what spot you get, who your neighbors are, so it really can make or break a trip. Conditions of the ground can also be hit or miss, and at the end of the day, you never know what you're gonna get. Rabbits get to camp wherever they want. They didn't even pay taxes. So after a summer of staying at hip camps, it's time to switch it up. But how good can we get it? We're using this free camping series to put that question to the test. This video is part two, so stick around to the end for a full breakdown of the site, things to do in the area, and how much we spent while staying at this free campsite. We have just arrived at our campsite for the night and this is one of our go-to spots but we've not been here in a while because we've been doing a lot of hip camping. It looks completely different. Usually all of this is just dead trees. We've been coming here for years and we've never seen this luscious greenness. That being said, the summer was very wet. Yes. So yes. I think it's done this place so good but it looks like a tropical oasis. We've already seen a lizard, a bunny, and a duck. We've been here for five minutes so we're gonna get settled in. We're the first to badmouth the spot when there's way too many bugs in the area, and we have been here before when it's been covered in bugs. But right now, this is perfect.
Good morning from Lake Lonsdale. Oh, we woke up to the most beautiful views this morning. This place never disappoints when it comes to the views. So, and then we had the most amazing stars last night. The sky was perfection. So we just sat around the fire, did some s'mores. It was so nice. It yeah, was so was good. Like giving everything it had 100%. Even the bugs and the wind seemed to just stop last night yeah. when the stars came out. We had it was, really good. I was saying to Jamie last night, we've come here a bunch of times. Last night was probably my favorite night that we've ever been here. Did someone say campsite tour? So guys, this week we are camping by Lake Lonsdale and it is one of our favorite campsites. There are about four or five different camping areas situated along the lake. Within those five camping areas, there's probably about 10 sites. You could easily fit up to 100 people in each one of those five areas. There's spots everywhere. The sites come with fire bins. They come with lots of flat, even ground for you to pull up a rig of any size. And on two of those five areas, there are toilet blocks. One of them has a boat ramp. And the whole thing is just so open and free. In the years that we've been coming here, this place has changed so much. For one, they've put up fencing along the beach side, but there is still access to get down to the lake. For two, the roads have been re-sanded. They used to be full of these huge potholes. It was actually a little bit hard to get our van around. So the whole thing has just been well kept and maintained. And one of the other sites had a new toilet block put in. But the place, as you can see, is completely empty. Of course, besides the rabbits everywhere. So the agenda for today, we're gonna go into town and show you around some of our favorite spots and some things to do in the area. The goal is to keep the spending to a minimum. If you tuned into part one of this series, you know that we spent about $80 on our first trip. So we're gonna see if we can get that even lower. What's falling? It's raining. Is it? It's raining. Oh my goodness, it's like so it's sunny. It's sunny and warm. raining. I was like, what just fell on me? I thought a bird pooped on I me. I thought a bird pooped on me, but it's raining. <laughs> we packed some snacks for the day, and yeah, we're gonna get into it. Wish us luck. It's supposed to be a scorcher today. Like, it's forecast at 36, so we're trying to get out there early so that we don't die and melt. I almost don't want to leave because when it comes to free camping, you're just not guaranteed you're gonna get the spot when you come back later. And we just collected all that wood. We're not getting this spot back. We're I don't I don't know. There have been people driving around and we know they want this spot. It's a cracker. Yeah, so we'll see where we end up tonight. So we are plugging in all of our portable fans while we are driving today because it's gonna be a hot one. Another great thing about our free campsite is that it's near the center of town, which also has free water. If you want to go to the settings section, click on settings and then click on smell option and then turn that on, you're going to get the smell of this bakery. Every time we've passed this bakery over the years, the smell of it is always amazing. And like every good country bakery, it's got the best pie in town, mate. Oh my god, you know I love a fluffy sock. You do. I love my cozy socks. You do, these are super cozy. My favorite store in Halls Gap. <laughs> I could break our budget if I go in there, so I'm gonna stay back. We're just window shopping today. Hmm. Watermelon cordial. Come on, Doug. <laughs> Come on, Doug. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> yes, take you to the barbecue joint instead. This place was open on our last trip, but there was an emergency and the chef had to leave. So, unfortunately, we missed it. But it's still on our bucket list. We're going to have to save it for the next trip. Yeah, because that's not in the budget. <laughs> it's not in the budget. <laughs> barbecue? God damn. <laughs> what do you want? Here. I don't have food. <laughs> Do not feed them. He's yelling at us. Well, actually, that's a kookaburra, so. Technically. Technically, it's all good. Fair game. Fair game. <laughs> So we always find that we end up coming to this little center of town either to get a coffee or grab brunch or just smell the pies or 
it's just a really good spot to like regroup, get some water. There's a convenience store right there. So that has all the stuff. If you forget something, they'll have it. Reception and the toilets here. There's a huge toilet block here and they're always clean. And the views are just amazing. You get like mountain views all around and it's just really open. Sometimes the water is like flowing through the rocks here. It's a bit dried up today, but yeah, we love this little spot. Oh my God, he looks messed so, up. Oh my. He doesn't even have the feathers on his head. No. He looks like someone tried to tar feather him. Yeah. He's going through a fire. Oh, jeez. That's sad. So if it's a hot day or you need somewhere to cool off and you don't want to pay money to go to the public pool, we always find ourselves coming to the Venus Baths. But it can get busy. Usually everyone's over there where it's like the, where the water's running over the rocks, but we always tuck into this corner over here. It's quiet. We wanted to find a new spot to explore, so we headed towards Splitter Falls. The path was easily harder than we anticipated. Oh, she's steep. Oh, she's steep. And we never did make it to the falls, which a passerby described as very underwhelming. Once again, this is what Doug's wearing on all these trails. I've already been told off. <laughs> Someone already said something to him. I have shoes on like a normal person. You never know when you're gonna wanna swim. Yeah, well, I took mine off, but my feet went in the water. No, no, you wasted the precious water. But we did find an awesome spot to take a break, have some lunch, and enjoy the amazing views. It's getting challenging. Oh, it's been challenging. Everyone that we've passed on the trail has just been like covered in sweat. The, the steps are getting so high that I have to like really leap up. Whoa. Oh my god, the rain! Thank god. Not for the camera. We have passed the same lovely couple three times, four times now on the mountain. In the last hour. It's so strange. <laughs> and they live near us. <laughs> we just keep walking in loops around each other. <laughs> oh god, not what we expected. <laughs> I didn't even bring any water. <sighs> Hashtag regret. We've made it. Oh, it's so beautiful, but you have to earn these views. Almost not in one piece either, but we've made it. Oh. Guys, check this out. We're now heading up the main road of the Grampians and these roads are so dicey and you've got people that just take these corners way too fast. You've got to go nice and slow because it is very, very windy. And there's wallabies. Oh yeah, and we've seen animals. Like we see them regularly when we come up this road. This is one of our go-to spots to come and have lunch because it is so easily to access. You drive right up to the lookout, you get amazing views on a clear sunny day. You're, you're not, not gonna be disappointed, not gonna be disappointed, disappointed coming disappointed. here. The views are amazing, 360. Yeah, and, and anyone can come here. You got a car, you can come here and check this spot yeah. out. Yeah, so you don't have to do all the crazy trails. You can come and just 
taken these amazing views. Even though we like to go off the track and climb the big rocks. But yeah. yeah, we're sitting on one of our favorite little rocks where we come to have lunch. It's our little hidden spot. So, see if you can find it. <laughs> bum bags. This is the famous rock that we like to call Instagram rock. Many people have jumped the fence and sat on the edge of that rock and gotten a great photo for clout. Some have died. <laughs> it's not funny. Dude. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have done it. Yeah, it's not funny. So yeah, when we first came here, people were just sitting on the edge of this. Mm. You know people do those like hang pretend to hang off that cliff? I don't think you can do it on that one. No, because it's yeah. like, if you, it's not pretend. There's nothing under to catch you. Yeah. It's not an optical illusion. Yeah. But the views are amazing here, and we have yet to come up here for sunrise, but apparently this is the spot to do it. So if you are an early riser and you're in the area, definitely make your way to Baruka Lookout because... And I could see why. It's giving Lion King, yeah. you know, when the sun rises. Yeah. It's, it's giving that, so... And there's our camping lake. And if you look real hard, you can see where we're camping from. It's somewhere, it's one of the lakes over there somewhere. <laughs> 40 liters, $80. $10.60, two pies. Not bad. We have just arrived back at camp and our spot is still here. Unreal. I can't believe it. I'm actually shocked. Home sweet home. Awesome. So we, we are back at the campsite after a day of exploring. It was so good just like being in the Grampians again and checking out some old places, but also popping into some new places and seeing some new trails. It was really nice, I really enjoyed it. But we are exhausted, well I am. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, every sense of the word exhausted. I am that. Me too. <laughs> So we are going to wind down for the night. Probably have an early night. It's almost 7 p.m. The sun is setting. It's beautiful here. If you are in the area and you're looking for a free camp, I cannot recommend this spot enough. It is our favorite. We debated whether or not we even wanted to share this because it's like our hidden gem that we found out about from a local. But we're sharing it with you. So I hope you appreciate that. Here's a life hack for when you're trying to keep the budget down ramen good morning the weather has changed for the worse <laughs> it's like very stormy and windy out there like we were gonna film outside but it's too windy yeah very dramatically like last night we got such an amazing sunset it was so calm, there were very few bugs again, and we woke up and she is in a different mood today. We've just been packing up and we're gonna hit the road. So as we've said, this place is our go-to spot. We've come here for years and years. After returning once again, I personally do still feel the same about it. I love this spot. It just continues to surprise me every time. I'm so glad that we've included this in this series. That we've probably had the best time that we've ever had here. Well, we have expressed how we feel about the super touristy spots of this state. The Grampians just definitely holds a special spot for us because it it was one of the first places we came to to experience van life, to test it out. I feel like we experience it in not such a touristy way. Like most people come up and stay in the center of town and we have this amazing spot that we found out through the locals. So I feel like we have like a different take on it. 
One of the things that I'm definitely going to be remembering for this trip was that view that we stopped and got after that long walk that you battled through. It was just really nice to explore some new places. There's so much to see in this area. Often we take friends here and we go back to like our favorite spots. So it was good to just explore some new spots. There's so much left to see that we haven't even seen up here. Just being at the campsite the, the first night was like one of the highlights for me. It was just so nice and still and just felt so good being back having the fire and doing the s'mores that was just really nice for me so last week we spent eighty dollars and this week we spent ninety dollars yes. so yes. we were ten dollars over and that was because doug insisted on getting two meat pies when we were in town for lunch i was hungry what do you want me to say i was too but i ate what we had in the car <laughs> so we would have been right on par of spending eighty dollars for two nights versus $80 for one night, which is even better. Most of the money is being spent on fuel, which you need to drive out to yeah. these campsites. And that $80, like we got out to this campsite, we didn't need any fuel, but we have to get home. If you were not gonna include the fuel yesterday and just how much did sleeping at the Grampians and enjoying the walks and getting some lunch cost, it would have cost us $10. But I assume that when you come out to the Grampians, you're gonna to need to travel to it, and you're gonna to need to travel home somehow. <laughs> so yeah, so we think it's important to factor that in. So have you been to the Grampians before? If you have been, do you feel it's overrated? Did you camp here? Was it just a day trip? Um, I definitely wanna know because I, I love hearing people's experiences of the Grampians. I feel like a lot of people only come up here when they're younger and then don't ever come up again, or they'll just come once, do a couple of the big like attractions like McKenna falls and then they they're like I've seen the Grampians I'm done so if you've come up this way I would love to hear your experience if you have come up to the Grampians before and you went to somewhere that we missed please do leave it in the comments because we are vets of this place but we are constantly looking for new ones so do not think that you don't have something that we don't know about we'd love yeah. to hear it if you are in Victoria and you know of any free camps, definitely let us know in the comments because we just might add it to the series or we just might go to it somewhere down the line. All right, guys, welcome to part three of that. Oh, no. I dropped you. Where the hell are we? You are currently watching part three of our free camping series. So far, we've explored some awesome spots, got lucky with some gorgeous weather, but things are about to take an unexpected turn. What is it, a leech? A leech, yeah. Oh my god, it was in my pants, dog. Don't forget to stick around to the end to see some things to do in the area and find out how much we spent while staying at this free camp. Wow, we have this whole place to ourselves. There's kangaroos. <gasps> kangaroos! Oh my god, slow down. You guys, there were two little kangaroos just hopping. We're getting ready for dinner. We have a fire going. Yeah, roaring, now. Yeah. And we pretty much have this whole place to ourselves. We can't even see any other campers. There's only one other person and they're like way over on the other side. We're really close to a toilet block, so can't wait to show you guys around. The kangaroos are back. There's four now. They're over there. Good morning. Our cooker's done. It doesn't stay in place. Today's replacement day. We're blowing the budget. Yeah. It won't stay down. Dinner time, after you've had a long day, you just want to eat. Like yeah. Spending 15 minutes trying to get this thing to stay down. It's super cold though, and I'm hungry. Yeah, that's true. Uh, this is, this is our solution. We wedged a stick in there. Now this is staying down. It's definitely leaking, but it is what it is. All right, you know what time it is. We didn't drive all the way out here to not give you guys a full tour of this place. So let's check it out. Now, are there public toilets? How big is this place and do you think that you could fit an entire group here and still be comfortable? 
I think yes. The first thing I noticed when we got here was that the roads were surprisingly flat and actually everything was very, very flat. You could fit plenty of people here, no matter what size rig you have, even if you're in a bus or an RV, there's definitely room here for you. I was also surprised to see how many campsites there actually were. This thing is about, I'd say two kilometers, stretch of road with just campsites littered all around it. It's got picnic tables that you might have seen us having our breakfast on. There's little fire pits that are set up around the place. And yes, it does have amenities. There are two toilet blocks that I've seen so far. So it's got everything that the family really needs. We're gonna go check out how clean the toilets are. But as for views, that is probably where this place is lacking. It is essentially just a cleared out grassy spot in the middle of a forest area. So it makes for a very nice quiet weekend. We're pretty much the only people here. We've only seen one other camper. But if you're looking for awesome views, probably not the place for you. If you want the views, go back to part two of this series. <laughs> they look new. They do, don't they? Two toilets, disabled, abled, or ambulant, however you want to say it. It's a very clean drop toilet, which is essentially a hole in the ground. There's a big closed off open area in the center of the campground that you can't drive into. So I assume that this is just for tenting or maybe it's just like a general park area when this place does get busy to have a bit of clear space for people to come out and picnic in the middle of. If you go to the other side of the big oval that we're on, there's even more campsites and the older toilet block if you're feeling brave. I'm not feeling brave. And I don't care, I'll admit it, I am not feeling brave. I'm not, I'm not going in there. I'll, I'll, I'll show you from here. I ain't getting closer. That's as much as you're getting from me. Also, there's lots of kangaroo poop around, so be careful. There's a cool hut here, it's got graffiti all carved into it. Doug loves abandoned stuff. Oh, I do. I don't. I'm in the creepy abandoned place. I don't like this. What are you writing? Doug and Jamie. Don't put my name on the wall. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a culprit of this vandalism. Harry Potter. Harry Power. Oh. <laughs> I thought Potter was in the Ned Kelly story. <laughs> Oh, there he is! Yeah. The Bucket Man. He's all over this He's Kelly over country. Place. So who is Harry Potter? Power. Harry Potter taught Ned Kelly his bushcraft and how to shoot cops. <laughs> Alright, let's go see this lookout. It's amazing. It is amazing. What and a view. The, like, it was just raining in overcast and yeah. it's just like opened up blue yeah. skies. Like, literally 10 minutes ago, this would have been a completely different lookout. Yeah, it's very easy to get to. Any car can get up here. Yeah. They're bumpy rock roads, but very flat. Very. It's a great lunch spot as well. Yes. I would say it's really good to come bring your lunch, yeah. have tea. You can light fires here, which is really nice. There's a bathroom and there's a picnic table. But yeah, the, other than that, like I would literally come here for the lookout, have some lunch and then back on the road. Yeah. So when we were searching for this campsite, we had no idea that it was near the famous Ned Kelly tree. And if you don't know who that is, he's one of Australia's original gangsters. And I'm talking original, like back in the 1800s gangsters. Anyway, this tree that we're camping near is the landmark of where one of the shootouts happened where three police members were killed. And apparently you can still see one of Ned Kelly's bullets lodged into the tree. But when I was doing the research for this place, it turns out that the famous Ned Kelly tree is a fake 
The real one was cut down in the early 1900s and then another one was planted and a plaque was put in place to start bringing a bit of history and tourism back to the area. So the famous Ned Kelly tree, more just like a friendly reminder of what went down here. It's so cool here how they've set it up and there's no one else here. We were the only ones in the parking lot and it's just really, really pretty and scenic. So as much as they have all this like police murder history here, the scenic part of it is beautiful as well. I didn't know anything about Ned Kelly over my years of living here. All I knew about him was he was just like this man. I always saw statues of him with like this thing on his, his head. His bucket helmet. <laughs> yeah, holding a gun. I just knew he's like some bad guy. That's a lot of money. Like back in the day, they really wanted Kelly's head. <laughs> I wouldn't have mind finding Ned Kelly. Even for that price today. <laughs> So when the Kellys ambushed the four police officers that were camping in this area looking for the Kelly gang, three of them died and one of them survived, and he spent the night hiding in a wombat hole until he could get away safely from the Kelly gang. That's crazy. That's a brave man. That's crazy. You ever seen a wombat hole? Horrifying. So there's a whole like little nature walk. I think it's like just over a kilometer. The more that we walk through it, I'm like getting into the history. The sign over there just said that the path of this nature walk actually reenacts the the path of the two policemen as they were escaping the second ambush so we're taking a step back into history at the start of the walk they have this little picnic area and i was just noticing they've chopped up firewood but they also have hot plates set up where you can hang cast iron pots so if you want to come here for a day picnic and actually cook out here in the beautiful victorian high country you can totally do that that's great Here he goes again, found more blackberries. This is how the Bushmen would have had to live. I'm just getting involved in the story. <laughs> would you do that? Do you just pick berries off the side of the road and eat them? I'm sorry that I'm organic. <laughs> If you do want to catch up on the Ned Kelly story, there is a movie with Heath Ledger playing Ned Kelly called Ned Kelly. Oh my god. Might have seen a leech. Okay, Very nice. All right. Can you just stand here and just, <laughs> just. Okay, I'm freaking out now. Roll them up quickly. Hurry up. Stop. Please stop moving. Stop moving, it's on the back of your shoe. It's tiny, hey. just stop moving. Oh my God, it was in my pants, dog. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Are there more? Please, no, no, please. there aren't any more. Please stop moving. I'm, I need to take my pants off. You don't need to take your pants off. Doug, how did it get into my leggings? It could have dropped off a leaf. Doug, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Listen, if it dropped off a leaf, how did it get in my leggings up here? I don't know. I felt it here and I grabbed it and I, I started rolling it down and down and down and then I pulled it out. Oh my god, there's another one! Yeah. Doug, oh yeah. my god! They're in this dirt here. Oh my god. What the hell? Yeah, they're in the dirt. We gotta keep them. Doug, they're in my shoes? No, they're in the oh dirt. Oh my god. We gotta keep them. Oh my god. They keep going on my shoes. So something to note when you are on this walk, in the moist season, oh uh, after it's just been raining, there are leeches in the ground, which does happen in the Victorian high country. Uh, Jamie isn't loving that. <gasps> they were in my leggings. Oh my God. Oh, she's had three leeches in her feet. I haven't found one yet, so. I'm freaking out. Those ones were little too, but there were that one that was big. Oh, there's one. Oh my God. Oh my God, Doug. Guys, we're giving up on the walk. It's a bit leechy and uh, we're not loving that. Jamie's running out of here. <laughs> Sixteen kilometers of this. Strap in. I'm so car sick. How's it going? Yeah, good. Oh my god, the kitchen is. We're testing the two-wheel drive. It was smooth sailing for most of the road. The last two Ks have been out of control. This has by far been the busiest place that we've been to on this trip. Everything's been pretty quiet. The car park's very small. It can only hold about five cars and it's full. So we've just yeah. pulled up on the side of the road with this space. Um, that road 
If it's been raining, take it very slowly. If it's been raining, I honestly wouldn't recommend it for two wheels. Yeah, if it's really been bucketing down, the waterfall might be flowing, but the road is going to be a struggle. Yeah, so if you have a two wheel drive on a wet day, you might not even make it all the way down. I always get like anxious when we go to waterfalls because I'm like, I don't want to do all this walk and you get there and it's so underwhelming. You know what I mean? Yep. I saw a review that said like worth the walk, so let's hope for the best. Like they named it Paradise Falls, so they better live up to that. We'll see, we'll see. Well, yeah. we've been to some waterfalls where it's literally just been a trickle and then other waterfalls where there's been nothing. Yeah, where well, it's dried out. Dried out, yeah. just a dead kangaroo at the bottom of it. So yeah. we've been burnt before. <laughs> so don't let us down Paradise Falls. This old toilet block is horrifying. Oh my God. Oh wow. I hope that's it. <laughs> We didn't want to just share a free campsite with you. We wanted to make this series about experiencing and enjoying the local area. We wanted to make it way more than just finding a free spot for the night. And I hope that we're doing that. This is crazy. It's kind of creeping me out of it. Like this could just fall. There's a tree on top of it. There's a legit Oh tree. yeah, there's a tree growing on it. <laughs> I'm underneath a tree. And a rock. In a rock. Going to a waterfall. I'm under the earth. So you mean this is it? Victoria's done it again. Waterfall. So this is the end? Yeah, this is the end. Why there's some cool rocks. Look at that rock formation. It's just standing there on its own. Where's the water? Like I hear it, but I don't see it. Honestly, oh, the yeah, there is. Where? In front of us. Keep going. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so it looks like someone left their garden hose on. That's shit. <laughs> the walk is beautiful. The walk is worth it on its own. Yeah, it's it's an easy walk down. Yeah. yeah. The steps look steep going back up, but not that steep. And it's really series, not that long. The same. There's trickles of water. It looks like there's a garden hose that's just pouring water down here. And uh, that's about it. So this is the waterfall. Doug, no. Yeah. Doug. Uh, Wait, are you allowed to go up there? I think you are. I think you can go all the way down to the water. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have a little start. Because those are stairs. So we thought that this barrier was like the end of the track, but it actually continues up over here and you can get closer to the waterfall. So it's like an official thing, but people have definitely been coming up here. Here. We're going on an adventure, guys. <laughs> it is steep. It's very steep. It's very going steep. Up this Even the walk up here is steep, but then it gets flat at the top. That part was... <laughs> Probably the steepest so far. There's like official steps. So, wow. That's cool. Wow, that's yeah, so that's cool. cool. It is cool. Yeah, all right. You got me paradise walls. <laughs> wow, it's cool. You're like under the cliff. Wow. All right, I take back everything that we said about this place. It is really cool. And we have this whole place to ourselves. We're under the rock. Like we're under the earth. It's so cool. Oh this my. Is worth it. it is so cool. You have to come here. This is, it's just so big. And you hear the echoing? Yeah. Hello. Ah! <laughs> From far away, it looks like a little garden hose. But when you're standing under it, it's like, Waterfall showers that everyone wants to get in their house. Yeah. It's like nature's waterfall shower. Yeah, so I think we're gonna go and have a shower in nature. Wow, we did it. It was so nice. Waterfall! How was that? It was cold, but I thought it was gonna be much colder. 
It was nice. It was nice, actually. A few moments later. Oh god, brain freeze. Just a bit of brain freeze. Oh my god. You didn't click that like button. I swear to god. I am drenched. <laughs> I couldn't stop going in it. <laughs> Even after I put my clothes back on, but I just feel like this experience is going to make me think twice every time I look at a waterfall and try to say it's disappointing. It's just changed my perspective on it because being able to get this close to it, it's impossible to think that this is disappointing. Yeah, I think the viewing platform is too far away. Yeah, you can't so really you like appreciate it, it. But when you're down here with it, it doesn't matter that it's yeah. not so big. It's not a booming waterfall, but it's just fun. It's just a really, really nice it's spot. It's beautiful. And it's been amazing just like having this whole thing. It really does feel like paradise. Yep. They were not lying. Hold on, paradise falls. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, I love it here. I, I just, I'll never look at a small disappointing waterfall the same no, again. No, no, like, I'll, I, it will always make me think of this place. Yeah. I thought the waterfall was fun. Everyone else loved. We have wrapped up our walk at the waterfall. It was amazing. It was amazing. I'm sorry, waterfall. I was wrong. You were amazing. Yeah. We had a change of heart yep. and highly, highly recommend coming here. Not in wet season. No. But it's like, if you have a four-wheel drive, it's probably going to be like thriving down there. Yeah. And yep. like beautiful. But yep. we had the best time in this weather in this season. So highly recommend adding this one to your list. We hope that you enjoyed exploring this campsite with us and the areas around it. As far as the campsite, it did its purpose. We had privacy, you know, we slept through the night. Clean, flat, toilets, cooking area. Yeah. I mean, it cost us nothing. I would go again if we were passing through and needed a place to stay overnight, but it's not one that I'm just like gonna go back to each season because it's so beautiful and overwhelming. It will do for a free camp spot and a place to like base yourself while you're exploring the area. Mm. It's definitely good for that. I will say the Ned Kelly tree walk is pretty cool, except for the leeches. But yes. if it didn't have leeches, it was a really nice walk. So let us know, have you been to this area before? Are there things in this area that we need to see? If you know anything around this like Lake Eildon area, let us know in the comments. And let us know down in the comments, have you jumped into a waterfall on a random walk before? How did you enjoy it? I found it to be exhilarating. Did you get leeches? <laughs> Let us, Let us know in the comments all your leech experiences. If you are in Victoria and know of any free campsites, please let us do know down in the comments because we might just add it to this series or we might go visit it another time. We're always looking for new places that we haven't been before. Yes. And as far as what we spent this weekend, we have spent zero dollars since we left our house. Mm -hmm. All we use is the diesel that we had in our tank. So we didn't actually go out of our way to spend any money on anything. We just, whatever was already in the car, we used that up, yep. which we're estimating around $50. Yep. So we spent $0. I, I prepped some extra lunch stuff so that he didn't get tempted to go into town and get something to eat. So always have food on hand. Well, we are packing up to head on the road to the next camp spot. So if you want to see where we're headed, stay tuned for next week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing and we will see you in the next video. Another day, another free campsite. This is part four of our free camping series. And let's just say it's already been a series we won't forget. We've already seen a lizard, a bunny, and a duck. A cook is done. A duck. Kangaroos! There are leeches in the ground. And surprisingly enough, last week's waterfall encounter has inspired a whole new level of adventure for us. Oh, God, brain freeze. Today we're going to be hitting up Newton's campground. And all the campsites that we're going to be visiting in this part of the series are in the Lake Yildon area. So far, there's been a lot on offer from walking trails to scenic lookouts. 
but we love being able to come back to a gorgeous campsite at the end of the day and just enjoy it all for free. So strap in and stick around to the end where we will give you a full tour, share things to do in the area, and how much we spent while staying at this free campsite. But first, it's time for some exploring. This isn't exactly next to the campsite, but if you are passing through, Mansfield is a great place to stop, top up your fuel, there's good public toilets, there's also a dump point for your RVs, and we're in the Botanic Park, which is nice and open and a great place to have some lunch. The gardens do have a pretty cool looking playground as well, but our number one rule on this channel, we don't film kids. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's our number one rule. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not look up if you are in you. Someone decided to break the budget today, didn't they? I don't know what you're talking about. Nice and quiet. I think that's a nice view to have out the back of the van. I think it's a yeah. Fun game to play at free campsites, human or animal. Someone's coming to our campsite. I know it caught my heart. This is my dream and Doug's experiencing it. Why? He's like in the camp. This duck. It won't leave, it's just hanging out in camp, so I don't know. There's some oats here, mate, and there's beer in the fridge. So, the only other people in this giant camp area, way over there, have like four or five dogs. And we got ambushed when we arrived. And anyway, they're barking up a storm. So, let's see if we get any sleep tonight. Good morning to me. This is our DIY cooker. You just gotta put a stick in it to work. DIY windscreen and Doug drying his underwear from the waterfall. Might need to go swimming again today. <laughs> about to be madness. It is about to go down. It's Chester when Chester sees these kangaroos. If he comes up, yeah. Grab the camera. We're here at Newton's campground and this place is lovely. It is literally on the banks of Lake Eildon and the views that we have gotten this particular morning are stunning. The sun is rising right over the side of our campsite. The ground is nice and flat. Now the good thing about these sites is they're nice and big and there's lots of them sprinkled along the side of Lake Eildon. I'm talking like maybe 10 kilometers worth of campsites along the edge of the lake. And a lot of them, especially Newton's, has got a toilet block, it's got communal fire pits, there's plenty of firewood lying around, and it's easy access for any vehicle. The roads are two-wheel drive. They do get a bit bumpy, whatever that's called, when the sand starts to lift and rise. But apart from that, it's a really nice little spot. Lake Yildon's very popular in Victoria, so you might have heard of it. But if you haven't, it's sort of like an adult's playground. If you're into jet skiing, if you're into fishing, if you're into motorbikes, if you're into four-wheel drive tracks, it all happens here around the lake. Kayaks, paddle boards, BMX riding, whatever your outdoor sport that you like to do, you can come to Lake Eildon, stay free of charge for the night, and you can do that here. There are tracks on one side and a lake with fishing and water sports on the other side. It really is like an adult's playground. The downside to that is it brings the crowds and especially over the summer breaks, there are going to be lots of people here making lots of noise. So you have to sort of pick your poison when it comes to that. 
The downside of this particular campsite, Newton's, is that it is on the side of the road. It's very close to the road, so all hours of the night, because this is such a popular spot, you're gonna hear cars coming down that road. We heard it until about three o'clock in the morning. There's one now. You get what you get. There are literally hundreds of kangaroos surrounding this campsite. I'd say thousands. Yeah, it's just, oh my God, it's so cool. So the signs all over Lake Yildon that say, please take your rubbish with you. And literally 10 minutes down the road is this awesome little town where there are some rubbish bins. There's a general store that looks like it sells liquor and ice, and there's even fuel here as well. is a bit windy today, but we have made it down to Goes Bay, which is an awesome little town that's 10 minutes away from the free camping sites at Lake Eildon. There's fuel here, there's a general store, and there's lots of little cafes, which means if you're sick of being by Lake Eildon camping for free, it's a very nice little 10 minute escape to plug back into a bit of reception and a bit of hot food as well. So guys, we were gonna go to this lookout, to lookout, but that is a four wheel drive sign and that is not a four wheel drive. So if you do have one, head up there and let us know how that lookout actually seems because I ain't ruining my van for this vlog. I'm sure it's beautiful. Go along Fry's Bay Road lookout. here at Brax Bridge Day Visitor Area and it is so beautiful here. It's so scenic. There's like pebble rocks leading into the clear water. There's toilets. They have picnic tables. And we've noticed that so many of the little tourist attractions around here have fire pits available for you to just hang out and like cook lunch and just like vibe in nature. And I'm here for it. But this place is so gorgeous. You can kind of walk a little bit along the water and the pebbles and it's just like you know, listening to that sound of water that I love so much. I think it's an awesome spot to just come have lunch again. There's so many little spots like this to come have picnics and just chill out or just to use a public toilet while you're around the area exploring. The parking lot is like a medium size compared to some of the places like the waterfall we went to. This will fit a little bit more than five cars, but I can see it getting very busy. And there's only like three picnic tables. So just keep that in mind if you come in like peak summertime when everyone's like in this Lake Eildon area. And now we're going to do a water test. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh What's got me? <laughs> the waterfall got me. Oh my god. I'm a new woman. We're all about cold plunges now. I don't I didn't bring my bathing suit. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Ah. Ah. It's really not that bad. Yeah? Woo. A few moments later. Ah. I thought you said it's not that bad. I just, I just pictured leeches on my feet. I gotta go. Stop moving. There's one on the back of your shoe. Stop moving. It's on the back of your shoe. It's tiny. Just stop moving. Ah! What's wrong? Ooh, the after effect. Ow, 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 ow. I'm fine. You should do it. No thanks. You didn't make it look appealing at all. Yay. So we're arriving at the next spot that we found on Wikicamps, which is a swimming hole, and I just had to get out of the van to scout the spot because the road to get into it is a little dicey. And when I did walk down the road to actually see where the swimming hole is, it looks like you have to jump a fence that used to be a gate, but it doesn't say private property on it anywhere, so we're definitely in for an adventure here. It seems to me that we can jump this fence and go for a walk through here, and I'll show you why. This is the sign that they've put up, which is the fishing guidelines that run along this river. Fires have got to cross through it, tenting has got to cross through it, motorbike riding has got to cross through it, but fishing, walking, and walking your dog all seem to be okay. So I say we jump this fence and see what's down there. Also, we drove around from all the giant potholes, came down the street, and then just pulled in here. So, a little dicey. Like there clearly was a gate here. 
What the heck? That doesn't say private property. Maybe they put it here so people can't get their dirt bikes. Could be, yeah. Wouldn't that just be like three poles yeah. or something? Weird with the people watching on the road. It does feel weird. This is an auto gate. Like, oh, let me just throw my dog over this fence. Uh, wait, look at this spot I found. <laughs> yeah, it's illegal. <laughs> Maybe. Wow. I don't know where we are, but it's lovely. We're gonna race our leaves to see who's cooking dinner tonight. Well, considering Doug hasn't cooked dinner once on this wow, trip. Wow, I cooked it on the first night. Probably should be him either way. I cooked it on the first night. What'd you cook? Muscle chefs. He heated up muscle chefs. Oh, I'm sorry. What did you cook last night? <laughs> I you, made what did you cook? chicken master wraps. Chef? I mean, okay, who cooks dinner every single night of our lives? <laughs> this is my trusty little leaf. You better not let me down. I don't know. I think I got a good shape, like aerodynamic. Wait, it's water. That's not aerodynamics. I think, I think we're going to go far in life together. Come on, little one. For dinner, I would like Korean barbecue chicken. You get to choose. That's what I would like. You don't get to choose. So now you're reneging on the deal. What? Unbelievable. And I don't know where that little rope swing is, but this is still a beautiful swimming spot. This one in the bridge place, these two are great. And this one especially doesn't feel like it would get too busy to like the public. Like, I prefer this one. Yeah, I don't know how many people would be like, Popping that gate to get here when the other one you can just pull up and it has picnic tables and stuff. And of course, Doug had to one up me going in and putting my feet in. Full body, full body, full body. Oh my god, it's cold. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Ooh. Oh my lord, it's cold. But it wakes you up. The water is really freezing, but now that the sun's out, it's quite nice. It's not bad going for a dip. Jamie, you should do it. I already did. <laughs> and my feet are nice and warm now. <laughs> Back in the car, nice and warm. Yeah. It's actually warmed up. It's hot in the car. Yeah, it's nice now. That spot is so beautiful. Even just sitting in the car right now, if we were driving through, I would just sit here and have lunch and then get yeah. back on the road. Like, yeah. it is so pretty. Let us know, guys, down in the comments, if you saw something like we saw, not really a gated, fenced-off area, but definitely a barrier to entry, would you jump it and take the plunge and just assume everything was going to be okay? I want to know how adventurous are the DJ Adventurinos. Yeah. How, how adventurous are you guys out there? I would have felt a little bit more hesitant if the sign wasn't there with the little symbols. I prefer places like this that aren't quite as open as the picnic area underneath the bridge that we went to. Yeah. Things are a little bit off the beaten path where they're not so, not commercialized, but... Yeah. Like it's still easy to nature access, but it's like, it feels like that you're out in nature and mm. it's not like, you know, stationed picnic tables. Like mm. it's, it's like... You're just walking through nature. You mm. just stumbled across a river while you're walking across the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this was not our first time staying at a campsite on Lake Eildon, but it was a different experience for us. Our first time, we didn't stay at one of the designated campsites. We stayed on a part of the lake during low tide. So, so in high tide, where we were camping would not be available, but because the tide was so low in the lake, we were able to camp like right near the water, away from all the people, away from the main road. So I did prefer that better. This would do me for overnight if we were passing through. Yeah, I mean, we had an overnighter and I had a great night. Yeah, yeah it was a perfect yeah. overnighter. I think Ilden brings a certain group of people because it is so open to boating, fishing, BMX riding, motorbike riding, RVing off-road. So if 
you can picture all those sports and all the people that love to do those sports all congregating around one lake, it's not exactly a quiet time. Yeah. So if that is your vibe, there's a reason Eildon is so popular. After dinner, it was like this serene moment of like listening to like just nature settling in the water and then you just hear like... <laughs> So yeah, it, it's not for everyone, but yeah, I did enjoy our stay there. I enjoyed our stay. Yeah. Like, I, I, that's not my vibe, but I still had a great night there. So, how much did we spend on this trip? Drum roll. $80 on fuel and nearly $10 on food. <laughs> we seem to be averaging between $80 to $90 every single trip. Seem to spend around $7 to $10 when we do buy any food. Which happens to be around 3.30, 5 o'clock, for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, it's just that <laughs> afternoon hunger kicks in and we're like, we should get something. I got a van full of food, but my belly. <laughs> <laughs> if you are in Victoria and you know of any free camps, definitely let us know in the comments because we just might add it to the series or we might check it out another time because we are always looking for places to explore. Honestly, with the price of fuel these days, who can afford to pay for a campsite? This is part five of our free camping series, where we explore free campsites around the state, share things to do in the area, and how much we spent along the way. We've been exploring around the Lake Eildon area of Victoria, and we can definitely say it's kept us on our toes. I'm a new woman. It wakes you up. I don't wake you up. After effect, ow! Oh. You might have seen a leech. A leech? A leech. There are leeches. There are leeches on my feet. And I'm happy to report that today is no different. I am not walking through a giant trench at 5 p.m. We don't really know where we're staying tonight. Free camping can definitely throw you a curveball from time to time. And today, that was exactly the case. So we just pulled over to this place on Google Map. It says River Access, and it's nice and quiet, and you have amazing access to the water. So we were saying that this is a good spot for someone that's just trying to get away from the crowds. Like this area just has so much water access. So I think you can kind of pick and choose the, like the crowded spots. There's no car access like beyond a certain point, and you can't have the motorbikes here. So I feel like that frees this up for like not motorbike people that just want to come and like you know chill by the water and if you saw last week's video I prefer our secret little spot we had to climb the fence As soon as we drove into Jameson, we saw a sign that says, Jameson is a tidy town. So we're gonna see if this actually lives up to the well, expectation. I see one piece of litter. But yeah, it is so pretty here. So I wanna see what it has to offer. Look at all the platypus. Can you imagine if today's the day I actually see a wild platypus? You, just you, not me? Yeah. <laughs> like I found the koala. What the hell? Okay, Doug just called me from the hot tub while I was working in the van. There's a koala in the tree. I'm trying to open the door so I don't scare it. Hopefully we don't encounter any leeches on this walk. Are there more? Please, no, no, please. there aren't any more. Please stop moving. I'm, I need to take my pants off. You don't need to take your pants off. This guy's got a bath on the side of the river. It's not very tidy. Plus, it's like directly opposite a bench, so there's some weird vibes going on in Jamison. <laughs> yeah, are you sure that's not a fire pit? It is a fire pit, yeah. <laughs> Gonna ruin the joke, mate. Anytime I see like leaves like this, or like big maple leaves, is this a maple leaf? I don't know, but I always think of tree stars. Land before time. If you know, you know. Who's going for a dip today? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. No, <laughs> no, you went late. What's shoot? That means go. No, it's just rock, paper, scissors. No, it's rock, paper, scissors, shoot. No, so you warm. lost twice, everyone. Yeah, but winner loses. <laughs> what? Winner loses. 
There's never any platypus in this state, and this state is covered with pictures of platypi, but there's no platypi in it. Once again, the Victorian state has lied to me. <laughs> We're here at the lookout near Jameson. Jamie's having a bite to eat, and this lookout is stunning. It's about a 10 minute drive up the road from Jameson. Very windy road, so if you do get a little bit car sick, watch out for that. He's talking about me. <laughs> We're here on a nice clear day, and the views are gorgeous. There's two spots that you get a really nice lookout. One of them points out towards Lake Eildon, the other one looks out towards the Goulburn River and towards Jamison, and they are both stunning. It's a great spot to have a bit of lunch, isn't it? The water on these rivers are so crystal clear. They're just so inviting, even in the chilly weather. Yeah, even though it's freezing cold now, the sun's gone. Just makes you want to touch it. Still want to be in it. But we won't. <laughs> We've done enough of that this series. This is what happens when I put Doug in charge of finding the locations to explore. I end up crawling through all Whoa, the bush. I found the big hole. This spot is two spots on Google. On the right hand side of the road, it's Scott's Mist. It's a very nice little day visit area where you can access the river. I would not want to go there in a two wheel drive on a rainy day. I didn't even feel comfortable taking the van down there. It's very steep and with all the foliage that falling, it looks very slippery. The second place is across the road on the left hand side, and that is called Digger's Sweat. No diggings. Put it on the screen, all right? There's too many names for this one corner of the road. And it's essentially just a big hole. There's almost no signage for it. There is literally just one tiny little sign tucked away behind the trees that you can't see on the road. If you are looking for it, you do go to Scott's Mist, and then you walk directly across the road until you see the small yellow sign that says, walking track this way and it's not even a walking track. It's a big hole that the miners used to mine clay out of. Here it is. Go on in Doug. Hell no. <laughs> you wanted to come here so bad. The places I take you to, they're off the beaten path. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. This is where they take kids for field trips? Yeah. Oh my god, this is huge spider webs. We're going on a proper adventure. We're gonna leave Jamie. We're gonna leave Jamie here in this forest. <laughs> Ow, something is so prickly. Ow, oh my god, I do not like this. I see him. Do you wanna go through that? Uh, do what? This is so messed this up. This is nuts. I'm not dressed for this. Oh wow, this is crazy. Oh wow, guys, you gotta see what we're about to walk through. Oh, this is crazy. Everything's hurting. Look at that, are we gonna go through that? <sighs> it's, all oh, the mosquitoes are, coming out as well. Why are we doing this? Ow, we could be roasting marshmallows. Doug. Guys, look at this. Look at all these thorns. Guys, look at this. All right, go, go, go. The sooner we get there, the sooner we can leave. The sooner we get where? How far does this go? I thought it's just this, oh my God. Nah, man. Keep going, go, go, quick. I don't want to stand still. <gasps> leeches. Dude, we gotta get out of here. Ah! Oh my God. <laughs> This is so creepy. <laughs> I am not walking through a giant trench at 5 p.m. at night. It's crazy that they just let people go in there. You are no longer in charge of <coughs> setting up where we explore. What do you mean? That was awesome. You're fired. Is that not an adventure? Now I have to try not to get hit by a car. <laughs> There's like no walkway. <laughs> it's just going to the bush and good luck. <laughs> oh, she's back home. She's safe. I think I have a leech on me. All right, stop, stop. stop. We 
just went to our campsite that we were planning to stay tonight and it was completely full which is unfortunate because we've had a pretty good bounce up until now and so we went down to the next campsite that one was even busier which we were a little surprised because it's the weekend before Easter and Easter is usually when all the campsites fill up so we weren't expecting that um, we're driving 10 minutes down the road but it is starting to get dark, so we obviously want to settle in to camp. We don't really know where we're staying tonight. I don't like leaving it so late in the day. Like, I would prefer to finish everything that we had to do by four o'clock. And today yeah. we like, we pushed it a little bit yeah. too late. When you fill the days with too much activities and then you don't know where you're staying, it's, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. But here we are. This is one of the biggest cons of free camping. You just don't know what you're gonna get. So, wish us luck. The guy at the general store gave us this map. They were so nice in there. It saved us. Yeah, and it's absolutely saved us because, oh no, not these roads again. Oh, they're so bumpy. There's so many potholes. Oh my God. We're just trying to make our way down, checking out the campsites. So next we're here. Okay, it's completely empty. It smells bad here. It smells like gas. Is yeah. that us? No, Are you sure? General store giving us this map absolutely saved I the day. Saved the day. But it smells like gas. Yeah, it does. We're gonna check the gas bottles. And we're gonna check our gas bottles. It's like overwhelmingly gas. Yeah. I need to get out of this car. We just hit a big bump on those roads, so I don't know if it like hit the gas cooker. So Doug's checking everything right now because. <laughs> Luckily, we just got here so we can take everything out and we don't need to keep it in there, but it's definitely something in the van. The culprit is our broken cooker. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I mean, he's the prime suspect. We have it all to ourselves. Everywhere else is full. They don't even have river views. I know, they didn't. And we almost went back to Doctor's Creek. Oh, mate. Joking ass. He had another leech scare. Another leech scare. Jamie, I have a surprise for you. Um, this spot has something special. What do you mean? It's got something special. The toilet? No. Got blackberries? Not blackberries. Where are you going? Where are you going? Ooh. What's that? That's so cool. There's stairs. There's stairs. There's little stairs someone's made. Wow. Oh, oh my god. Did you come down here? I didn't come all the way down here. Wow. This is so cool. This is like paradise. Wow. You're about to stay at Doctor's Creek. I know. With a million people. I know. This is crazy. Worth the drive. Worth the stress of the drive. Not planned at all. We never even heard of this campsite. And of all places, we went into that general store because you wanted to go to the other general store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, no, no, no. And then it Don't all. Don't say you found this store. I found. I was like. <laughs> and then let's go I was the like, drive. let's go here, Flower Bag Reserve. Let's go. Welcome to Paradise. You're welcome. There's the van, and here's paradise. Yeah. Put them near the trees, way over there. I don't. I'm scared of that. Yeah, it's gross, isn't it? Oh my god, that thing is alive. Yeah. Oh my god, I really don't like that. I don't like that. I'm ready for a load, Australia. All I need is an axe, a cooker, a van. <laughs> A sleeping bag. <laughs> Two blueies. <laughs> We 
we're here at the beautiful flowers bag and the looks might be a little bit deceiving with this one. Now, the first thing that I like to think about this site is that it has got great road access and the road is not as busy as it was in some of our other free camps during the series. The site literally just pulls straight in and the campground almost begins immediately. As for the size of the campground, I think you could fit about five caravans or five families spread out here very comfortably without it feeling too crowded. And it is very flat almost the entire way across. It does have its own toilet block as well, which is quite handy, but it is just a drop toilet. But the very sneaky thing about Flower's bag is that if you get the back site, you get your own private river access. So as for the river access, the river does run along the entire campsite. And I'm sure the other campers are gonna be using the stairs that take you down there. But there are a couple of entrances to get towards the river. And the site right at the back definitely has the best entrance for it. Like, unlike some of the other sites that we've been to, there are no designated fire areas that have those sort of metal hot plates that you can cook up your dinner on. But there are homemade fire spots that have been sort of sprinkled around the campsite. So fires are obviously allowed here. Just like that, we were heading home after another awesome camping experience. This spot was amazing, and I think it's one of our favorite free camping spots ever. Yeah, this one's taking the lead. We hope you enjoyed tagging along and all the adventures in this area and just seeing how many options are around this area. Mm -hmm. We absolutely love coming out this way and I'm glad that we like spent a bit of time around this yeah, area because too. it was good to see that it's not just camp spots on Lake Eildon. They have so much to offer in the little outskirt suburbs. So the, Doing this has made me want to deep dive even further. The highlight of this trip was the level of anxiety I was feeling as the sun was setting and we still didn't have a place to sleep. Then when we pulled into this one, saw that it was completely empty and we did a little bit of exploring and realized what we had actually yeah. found. Yeah. I also love sitting at the fire at the end of the day, just roasting marshmallows. Mm. My least favorite part of the trip was definitely going down that gold mining path. No way. No thank you. Not happening ever again. Goodbye. Yeah, that was horrifying. That was horrifying. <laughs> that was um, your idea. That was my idea. I'm happy that we went and saw it. I cannot believe that's open to the public. And I'm not like... I'm not much of a prude. Like, usually I'm like, yeah, let them go there. That'd be great fun. And I, like, saw that this clay mining shaft was with trees leading over the top of it. I'm like, they just let people in this hole? <laughs> let us know, guys, down in the comments, would you not only go there, but go into that old shaft and just stand in it and look up at the giant trees towering over you? Because I did, and I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and let us know, if it's getting late in the day, and you're looking for somewhere to sleep, and you pull up to a free camp, do you just, like, try and find a spot to squeeze in? Or are you one of the people that will continue on, take the risk, you know, watch the sunset a little lower, and hope that you find an even better spot? So, are you a risk taker, or are you like, I'll just squeeze in here, and I'll find a spot tomorrow? Well, at least I got somewhere to sleep. Yeah. yeah. Let us know in the comments, because we took the risk, and... It was worth it. If you grew up in the 90s, there was one thing that was drilled into all of our heads. Don't go chasing waterfalls. But today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. This is part six of our free camping series, where we take you around Victoria, sharing free camps, things to do in the area, and how much we spent along the way. We've had some pretty good bounces so far. A waterfall. It really does feel like paradise. It wakes you up. There are literally hundreds of kangaroos. But as they say, what goes up must come down. And that includes our luck. So I think Google took us to the wrong spot. All right, guys, as you can see, it's pitch black out there and we still have a two hour drive ahead of us. And the interesting thing about tonight's campsite is it's not even on Google Maps. That means when we get there, we might just be driving around a state forest in pitch black looking for this campsite because we know the general area that it's in. We just don't know exactly where. Wish us luck tonight, guys, because this is going to get interesting. This is so creepy. Apparently we are 10 minutes away from our campsite, wherever that is. There's a house there. <laughs> oh wow. 
wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is such a pretty river. Oh my God, look at it. You can actually see the bottom of the rocks already. And we pulled up right next to a fire pit. Like this is a perfect little camp spot that we just picked out in the dark. Wow, I oh did God. not expect it to be like this. Look at this day, there isn't a cloud in the sky. When we woke up, there was rain pitter pattering on the van and because all the windows were fogged, I assumed that it was going to be like an overcast day, dripping with rain, but. In some blue sky. Where's that water coming from? G'day guys, just doing some plumbing. We've got these metal pull clips that seem to have popped off. I don't know what was wrong with it because it's actually still very tight on the pipe. So maybe it just wriggled off while we were going off the bumps. Now we're going to have to loosen this off so we can push it back around the foot pump. Uh, and then tighten it all back up. We've spent the morning just soaking in, having this place to ourselves, and now it's time to show you guys what it's all about. All right, welcome to Annie Greenway Reserve. Now the fun thing about this campsite is you cannot find it on Google Maps, you cannot find it on Wiki Camps, but it is super easy to find. All you have to do is come to the waterfall that is here, because I cannot pronounce that word, and the campsite is literally right next to it on the same road just before it, and there's signs everywhere that say no camping, no camping, no camping, Annie Greenway Reserve, and that is clearly the campground. There are drop toilets here. There is an amazing little river that you can swim in when it gets hot. But according to the reviews of this place, it does get very crowded and it's not a particularly big camping ground. I think you could fit maybe four to five sprinter vans here max. Jamie thinks maybe less than that. So over the weekends and definitely during the public holidays, if you don't get here early, it will absolutely fill up. But we've had the place to ourselves and it is Lovely. A few things to note about this place are there are fire pits scattered around so you can obviously set up fires around the place. But I will say, the road getting in is a bit dicey. It's been torn up by four-wheel drive tracks. The good thing is that the ground around the road is nice and stiff. You'll have no problem on a two-wheel drive. But you do need to note that there isn't a lot of flat ground around. It's very bumpy, very hilly. The campsites are flat, but it's separated by very big mounds. So you just want to keep that in mind when you do plan to come out here if you're in a small two-wheel drive. All right, let the waterfall chasing begin. All right, we are here at the first waterfall and it is beautiful. It's literally next door to the campsite. There are a couple of picnic tables. There's a small parking area, so it definitely can fill up fast on a busy day. Again, so can the campsite. So I can definitely see this place being super popular in the summer. We even walked up along the waterfall and there's just more access to the river up there. The rocks did get super slippery. The pathway to walk up it did get very muddy, so if you do explore, always be careful. This is giving picnic spot vibes. On a, a beautiful spring day, I can definitely see us coming here. You can pop your cooker out and just enjoy the views. All right, let's see what the next waterfall has to offer. Will the waterfalls get better from here or will they get worse? Only time will tell. Let's see. We are on our way to the second waterfall and the roads are made of dirt. What does dirt become when it's mixed with water? Mud. What's the enemy of a two wheel drive? Log trucks. Mud. Now there's a sign saying that log trucks also use this road that is continuously getting smaller. So it is terrifying. We did slide. My fear of heights is kicking in. 
speaking of log trucks, we just almost crashed into one. If you guys haven't seen a log truck, you might have seen us talk about them on this channel before. You're actually going to be able to see one now. Doug, everyone's seen Final Destination. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Okay guys, if you come to Albert River Falls on Google, this is it. So it looks like waterfall number two was an absolute fail. So it looks like they're getting worse as we go. On to number three! Number three is further up this muddy track. So uh, pray for us, okay? And if you have not hit the like button yet, you better. Because we are out here risking our life for this vlog. We are pulled over on the side of this rocky road. So it's gone from dirt and mud to just... Tracks. Tracks, giant rocks. These are just tracks. And right. the thing is, Google Maps is not even showing that you can get access to this waterfall either. Uh, we can't even drive to the waterfall, so that's what happened to the last one. The roads leading to this place have been destroyed by the weather and the trucks. We nearly got bogged twice on the drive up here, and that was on the muddy roads. And now the muddy roads have completely stopped, and for the next five minutes, it's just, it's not even a gravel track. I think they've just thrown some rocks down so the log trucks can get around. And we've already had a couple slam up against the bottom of the van. I think we're failing the waterfall mission. I don't think we can press on, man. No, we have to turn around, and now our only goal is to get down this mountain in one piece. Without sliding, without getting stuck and having to call for help, and without having an anxiety attack, okay? And we were supposed to have lunch at one of these waterfalls, so we're doing this hangry. So let's just hope that we're still in a relationship by the time we get down to the bottom of this mountain, okay? These roads have been so bumpy that they've unplugged our fridge. We've been on this road for like an hour now. My like adrenaline levels are dumped. <laughs> Well guys, we're back from the waterfalls. Well, the lack of waterfalls. We are back at the original waterfall having lunch because this day has gone to crap. Off the rails completely. We nearly went off the road. But we are, we are so hungry right now, so we are just trying to get anything in our stomachs right now. On the way down, one of the log trucks actually passed us and it ended up taking up the entire road. Now the problem with those roads where I was thinking about how to explain it on the way back down, when you're on those roads, you sort of commit to them because you're going up windy roads as you're climbing the top of the mountains. The thing is, you don't know how bad it's going to get, and when it does get bad, there is nowhere to do a three-point turn because it's those long, sharp, windy roads. Seemed like the higher up the mountains we were going, the more they were doing deforestation and the worse the roads were getting. We had to just pull the pin. It got too dicey to keep driving along. I feel a bit disappointed because we had all the plans of how we wanted this video to go and obviously didn't go to plan. Yep. And we feel like we're letting you guys down and that we're not, we don't have anything really interesting to show you, but it is what it is. Like we don't always have control over what's going to happen and we kind of just have to roll with the punches. We're taking the L. I think the thing to remember is the point of this vlog is to take you guys on our adventures and yeah, we do want to show you some cool spaces and tell a cool story at the same time. But the reality of our adventures is they don't always go to plan. Yeah. And this is one of those episodes, guys, where it didn't go to plan. So I was going to ask which one was your favorite waterfall, but... The first one. <laughs> we already know the answer. <laughs> it was the first one. Let us know, guys, have you accidentally driven a two-wheel drive car down a four-wheel drive track? Because I'm embarrassed to say this, but it's not the first time that we've done this. Literally the first weekend we bought this van, we accidentally took it up a dirt bike track. Have you accidentally <laughs> bogged your two-wheel drive car? I love hearing those stories. Let us know down in the comments. 
we have a couple more videos coming for you guys of this free camping series so although this one didn't go to plan hopefully we have some more interesting stuff ahead before we wrap this series up because we just finished finalizing our winter series and we're really excited we're for that. We're excited for that. Also, if you must know, we spent $40 at Macca's last night. <laughs> it got really late oh, yeah. and we were like, we're not making dinner when we get yeah, there. So are. someone may have gotten a delicious Big Mac. <laughs> McDonald's for those that don't call it that. Oh yeah, McDonald's. Funny story, in Australia it does say Macca's on the side of the building. Like so it actually says It's that. Macca's to me. <laughs> All that's left to say is maybe TLC was right. Last week, we spent the day attempting to chase waterfalls in our tiny home on wheels. So I think Google took us to the wrong spot. And this week, we're traveling around the Gippsland area of Victoria, and hopefully it goes better than the last time we were here. Jesus, there's a fucking... Massive huntsman. Oh my God. In the van. Jesus! It's all right. It's all right. Welcome to part seven of our free camping series where we explore campsites around Victoria, sharing things to do in the area, and how much we spent along the way. And today, we're in sale. We have passed through sale before, but we haven't really explored this area, and we quickly realized how connected it all feels. The bigger lake here connects to the smaller one, and the botanic garden is within walking distance. A lot of the wetlands and walking trails seem to be all connected too. There's boat activities, it's pretty RV friendly, and not to mention surrounded by so much history. It's definitely one of those places that are just so inviting to get out in nature and live that active lifestyle, which got us feeling a little motivated for a quick workout. Yeah, that's pretty good. Like, yeah, you do get a bit of a pump. Yeah. How many yeah. are you on? Alright. I don't count. I don't count. I just go till I can't go. Alright, let's see it. <laughs> yeah. That's it? Wow! I always thought these things were like a bit of a joke, you know? Yeah, because you always judge everything. Yeah, I do. Oh! Oh yeah, that'll get you. These gears have been working. Look, it's like goo. You can see it is manual, so a machine will attach to this. This is where they mount it, and then it locks onto this. So it's the same as that like an engine. concept. Yeah, like maybe a diesel engine, it will spin, and then this whole bridge, while they're on it, will spin and allow the boats through. That's wild, mate. I don't know what they put here. But yeah, but you can see here, it yeah. touches both of them. Yeah, it attaches to both, they mount it here. When I first saw this bridge, I saw all the gears in the photo and I was like, I don't understand what this is or what it could be for. Then we were watching a video on the Travel Beans YouTube channel and they were on a canal boat and the bridge swung open. You just had to turn the gears. And I was like, holy crap, that's what that bridge was. That's what it looks like when it's open. It's crazy. What a bridge. It would be so weird to Water see that. Bridge. That bridge doesn't get enough respect. Put some respect on this bridge's name. Bridge be <laughs> no, it only works one day a week for a couple hours. That's true. <laughs> right now we are walking up to the water tower in Sale. And it's just so pretty here, walking in here. It's like, reminds me of the botanical gardens in Melbourne, like mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. New York St. Kilda. Yep, the quieter. The, yeah, they're yeah. so much quieter. They're just so nice. And yeah, it also reminds me of Ballarat. Yeah, spot on. And Ballarat was one of those towns where it was a Friday afternoon, it was 3 p.m. And the whole city was just sort of chilled. There's yeah. something about not being in the CBD that just brings the energy right down. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> The water tower is only open between 2 and 4 p.m. and it's only open on Saturday, so we have about an hour before that window closes.
So the water is pumped up from an underground ball and then it sits up in here and it's gravity fed down to the rest of sail. Not a KFC in sight. Sail water tower for the price of a gold coin. It's worth it. The views up there is pretty good and the uh, storytelling on the way up the spiral staircase is quite good too. It's free entry but they do like you to have a gold coin donation which isn't much at all. If you're not from Australia, a gold coin donation is like one or two dollars. They're both about gold coins. To me the most impressive part was the giant copper barrel at the top of the tower that you get to walk under. It feels very ominous when you're underneath it. We have got one hour till the sun goes down. Our next campsite is called Spoon Bay. And that very much says track on it, which generally is reserved for four wheel drives, but it's only a 10 minute drive down the track. So we're gonna see what happens. Wish us luck once again. I just heard Jamie crash the drone. I heard it come down in the thick. I don't know where it is, it's bloody thick. So we'll see what happened. <sighs> Today is one of those days. I don't know what they build these drones out of, but start building everything out of it, houses, cars it's fine it looks physically fine i don't know what we're like about the electronics or the camera or anything but it looks physically fine All right guys, we're here at Spoon Bay Campground, or should I say we're adjacent to Spoon Bay Campground. Technically, this is where you come on Google Maps, but the actual campsite itself was so busy that we just drove down the track a bit, found this awesome little clearing area that we can tell people have been camping in before, and there are a few other scatters along the track. Now, one thing to note about this campsite is that the road in is about two kilometers, and it is corrugated dirt road. It is a very fun drive to make in a two-wheel drive. You can make it. I would be wary if it was raining, but it was nice and dry for us, and if you take the drive slow, you can make it all the way down the track. And even with that, a caveat to that is when you get to the end of the corrugated road, the tracks, the campsites are on the tracks, which are sand roads. So I wouldn't even come here in the wet. If it's been raining all day, I would open up wiki camps and look for somewhere else to stay if you don't have a four wheel drive. Just keep that in mind when you're looking for this place. Now the site does have drop toilets and it does have access to the big bay that is behind us. Even though the campground that we're in right now, you can't see it, it's all covered by reeds. There is no access here, but on the campsites proper, you can get down to them. As for where we are, we drove about five minutes down the track to find some more space to us. So it is a bit of a walk for us to get back to the toilets. But if you do manage to get here at the right time of the year, you can camp right next to the toilet block, which is just a drop toilet block. Like many that we've seen, throughout this series here in Victoria. Of course, if you are traveling with a rig that has a toilet in it, like ours does, it doesn't really matter where you park, does it? Now, this place looks nice and serene. On this side of the reeds, there is an awesome open bay that has lots of good fishing in it, and it certainly sounds like a nice, quiet area. I know that we're about 20 minutes from a military base, and those boys have been working because it has been gunshots all morning, it was gunshots all night, it has been nothing but gunshots since we've been here. So, not the most quiet campground in the world. As for us, even with the gunshots and the four-wheel drivers, 
We still had an amazing time last night. We had the fire set up right here. We had some s'mores cooking. The stars were out last night. I mean, I'm making it sound like it might've been a bad experience. It really wasn't. The road worked, we didn't get bogged, we got here. We had a wonderful night, we had an awesome dinner. This place is a pretty great campsite. You just need to be aware of what you're getting when you get here. So we are heading off after a lovely night at Spoon Bay Campground. So how much did we spend? $92. <laughs> we went to Woolies twice, but we, we kept forgetting things, okay? Yeah, we... Like we keep saying, we keep averaging between $80 to $90 on these trips. And most of it, like 95% of it, is going into our tank. What I love about the Gippsland area is it's so water-friendly. Sale as a town seems to be completely interconnected. So if you are into yeah. bike riding or fishing or bird watching, that whole town opens up to you. And then as you spread out into the areas that we've looked at towards the end of this series, it's all along the coastline or this nice bay if you don't want something as rough as what the coastline offers, you can have a nice quiet bay. This whole sail area does provide a lot of great free experiences. Yeah. The campsites are free, the town has got free yeah. water and walking trails. You can get a lot done for a little amount of money yeah. in the sale area. If you do know anything in the sale area that we have not explored, um, definitely let us know. We would love to hear it. And if you have any free campsites that you might know around Victoria, um, we would love to hear them. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the sale area, guys, next week's episode is the last episode of our free camping series, and we are still gonna be exploring the Gippsland area, the sale yeah. area as well. Today, we looked at the Spoon Bay area and sale. Next week, we're gonna be going right up to the coast to check out that area. So if you wanna see what the difference between the two areas are, make sure you tune in for the last episode of the free camping series. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> then we will be kicking off into our winter series, so you definitely do not want to miss that one. And with that, thank you so much for watching, consider subscribing, and we will see you in the next video. We are on one of the longest beaches in the world. Here we go! You are currently watching the finale of our free camping series. We have spent the autumn exploring free campsites around Victoria, sharing things to do in the area, and how much we spent along the way. This series has taught us a lot. Try not to be such a tourist, don't just look at Google Maps, use your eyes. It's kept us on our toes. We're not having a lot of luck with this. The leech? There are leeches. And reminded us all over again just how much beauty we have available to us in our home state of Victoria. It is so nice out right now. This is perfect. And today, we are wrapping it up with the famous 90 Mile Beach. Let's go. If you're looking for somewhere to stop off along the way, Yarram is a great little town to hit a Woolies, freshen up, get some fuel, and it's got this cool street art all over the place. As you drive through the town, you'll see it sort of speckled all over the joint, so it makes for a really nice stop to slow down and check things out on the road. One thing I will note though is that the locals are obviously dead sick of tourists coming here and checking out all their street art because there is a lot of signage that says private property, no parking, stay off the grass. So you just want to be aware of that as you're driving around Yarram. So today we are going to be exploring around Sail Victoria before we head over to the 90 Mile Beach Campgrounds and I'm really excited for it. So not only are we seeing signs that are warning us about snakes on this walking trail, there are signs that say beware of European wasps. I just, why? Why is this our hobby? Someone was not happy at how they labeled this black swan. I don't know a damn thing about these birds. Except the swamp hen. I know that one. So if you watched our summer hip camp series, you know that we've come to sail before, but we didn't really get to explore the area. And as much as I really want to drive on 90 mile beach and settle into the campsite tonight, I still want to check out what's in sail to do.
We are here at the lookout in the Sale Commons and it's just so beautiful. Yeah, as we were walking around, we noticed there's like 15 kilometers worth of walking trail that goes around these wetlands here. And it is stunning. It goes over little bridges and swamps yeah. and we've passed people. They're like fishing off the bridges as well. Like there's a lot to do here. Yeah. yeah, and apparently there's a bird hide somewhere in here, but the sun's setting. So we don't have time to like fully explore this place, but you could easily make a day out of this mm -hmm. or a morning, explore mm -hmm. some of the trails. There is something in the bushes here, like a bird, I don't know. All Rustling I, around right All I'm hearing us. is noises, and I'm like, it's time to go, it's time to wrap the, oh. oh, there it is. Oh, that little thing's making all that noise? Yeah. So many birds. So if you are a bird lover and you have not been here, highly recommend. Uh, hello, mate. Uh, <laughs> you just gave us a heart attack. That was quite rude. So big. <laughs> <laughs> it's like scratching my ass. 90 Mile Beach. The kangaroos, massive. There is room out here for them. Roof. There's room out here for them. Jamie, Jamie, there's room out here for them. Just chill out, brother. Just chill out. Hello. So far, 90 Mile Beach campgrounds, they're great. Nice and flat, right off the main road. I'll tell you what, the weather has definitely changed. We are no longer boiling. As you can tell, we put on a couple more layers and we're going to explore the beach. Whew. Which one of us is going in? <laughs> oh wow, it's so pretty. Oh wow. It's actually further from the beach than I thought. I thought it was right here. It's so windy! <laughs> oh, that was crazy wind. The second you're off the beach, you're clear of it. But once yeah. you step onto the beach proper... There's no awesome. windbreak. I was gonna say, oh, I wish we had more views of the beach. Yeah, now I'm happy we don't. <laughs> <laughs> With that wind, it would be a horrible night's sleep. All right, back to camp. He's still here. Hello. I announce Camp 90 Mile Beach, open. Open for business, baby. Aussies everywhere. So last night before we went to bed I was trying to light a fire and I noticed that the fire lighters in our top box that we keep on top of the van they had gone bad. I think we had left them out too long and all the kerosene had dried out of them. So I was like that's all right not a big deal we've got fire lighters in the other one that we keep in the van. Mozzies. There is only one fire lighter left in that box so this is it. This is our chance to have a fire. And I would like to use a little bit more dry kindling, but there isn't any around. It's very damp out here. I'm thinking I might cut the kindling that we have up into smaller pieces, just so it has the best chance to light. I've gone through the bag and found the smallest pieces of kindling that we have, so hopefully this will be enough to light. I might even like strip some of the bark off it. Oh God. Oh, there's so many, there's so many mozzies out. There's so, the air is like just thick with mosquitoes. It's great. I've got a mozzie bite in the middle of my head. Oh, you could just see one on my head then. I've already got mozzie bites all over my forehead. Bushmans. I completely forgot we had this until I was looking for more fire lighters. This stuff repels leeches, which has been an ongoing theme of this video. Better leave this out for Jamie. Okay, this is it. I've broken down the kindling. This is our last fire lighter. I even covered everything in Bushman's because Bushman's is flammable.
Good morning, YouTube. I have officially joined the party. <laughs> Doug's been out here filming his own episode of Alone while well, I've been staying warm cooking breakfast. As long as I have a van full of supplies, I'll last out in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> can you see my breath? Oh my god, you can. Yeah, I'm just gonna go dip my feet into the ocean, no big deal. Gippsland Victoria says it's moderately safe to swim in during summer. <laughs> The sign over there says no life-saving facilities or something like that. So um, that's why we're not like going in for a proper swim. We're just gonna maybe up to the knees, but we gotta suss the water first. Also, before we go jump into this icy cold water, we just wanted to say that we are about to hit 500 subscribers and we actually can't believe it. Yeah. And we just wanted to say thanks to anyone that has decided to subscribe and stick around for our crazy or not so crazy adventures seriously it's crazy to us it is wild to us uh yeah a huge huge thank you especially for me i mean especially I'm, for especially me. well i just feel like <laughs> I just, jamie jamie doesn't really care <laughs> he doesn't care that much i feel blown away that we're this close to 500 subscribers like we've yeah. kept every single video that we've recorded on our channel because to show our growth even though i wanted to delete a couple of the early ones yeah but from Everyone who's subbed from 10 subscribers and if you're just subscribing now during this free camping series every single one still blows my mind and means yeah. so much to us so yeah, maybe not especially from me, but <laughs> sincerely is a better word sincerely from me. Oh, because mine's is so I'm, I'm not genuine In my heart <laughs> my <laughs> truth. Well, I, I can say we're both so at in our hearts and our truth and especially mine especially my <laughs> truth you guys know what I'm trying to say. Thank you all very, very much. We are but so grateful. Bigger thank you to the pre-100. <laughs> yeah, if you were here before 100 subs, you're the real OGs. But honestly, if no, you thank were, thank you all very much. If you were one of our first 20 subs, those are the real, real God OGs. God damn, Jamie is gonna send you out your hand-colored water painting. She's no. gonna get to it. And Doug's gonna. Doug's gonna paint your house. That's a deep cut, guys. If you get it, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> Our very first video. <laughs> it was so bad. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot to both of us. And to celebrate, we are going to jump into the ocean. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but especially me, I am so grateful for you even more than Doug, okay? <laughs> These waves right now, Whose idea was this? Oh my God. Jesus. They just sound so angry. <laughs> Look at the walk we have to go all the way back <laughs> freezing our butts off. This is good. I am crying. This is love. Yeah, we want to do this. This is going to be awesome. Oh, wow. It's so straight. Here we go. <laughs> Ready? All right. Downside of not having any heating in your van. We're all warmed up. How about a tour of this place, huh? Okay, guys, we're here at campsite 10 along 90 Mile Beach, and there are quite a few campsites that stretch the entire length of the beach. To be honest, I'm not sure how many, but I'm gonna say if it's not a public holiday, there are more than enough. There are quite a few sites. What I'm loving about these beaches is sites one to six, they're actually dog friendly. So you can bring your dogs down here, you can camp out with the whole family. There is a lot of nice open ground and quite a lot of the campsites actually have toilet blocks as well. So if you are in a setup that doesn't have a toilet, ours does, then you'll be all right because there are toilet blocks too. Another nice feature about the campsites is that there is a massive windbreak. Now I'm not gonna lie, when we rolled up, we were a little bit disappointed. If you've seen our videos before, you know we love a good water view and to have the beach all the way over there was kind of a bit of a letdown. So we went for a bit of a sunset walk and the bloody wind last night was insane. So having this massive windbreak here, 
is actually a game changer. It wasn't a windy night, but the wind that was coming off the beach was incredible. I can't imagine what it would be like here on a windy night. Crazy. An added bonus of this, if you do enjoy the wildlife side of camping, is there is a lot of wildlife around here. So how many people can you fit down at these 90 mile beach campsites? Honestly, that's a bit hard for me to answer. Where we are right now at the start of campsite 10, there's little pockets and you could fit three vehicles in here. It'd be cramped, there'd be one there, one there, one there, but you could easily fit them, there'd be enough room for everyone. How that spans along the entirety of it, I'm really not sure. For instance, we pulled into campsite one and there was enough room for two. There was one camper down one side, there was one camper down the other side. An RV rolled through last night and disappeared into the bushes somewhere. We haven't heard them, we haven't seen them, we have no idea where they are, and they were a big rig. So, I think you just have to start driving along 90 Mile Beach and pick your spot as it comes. As for fires, there is only one built-in fire pit here, but you can tell people have done them all over the place. And on the toilet block, there are guidelines for how to light fires safely. So it's obviously one of those campsites where you can pick and choose where you want to have your fire as long as you're not putting it too close to the shrubbery on the edges. There is a bit of confusion that I just wanted to clear up for you guys. When we were researching what to do around this area, a lot of places came up about driving along 90 Mile Beach, and we had seen YouTube videos of it before. Now, when you go to tripadvisor.com.au or you go to Australian travel sites, they'll talk about 90 Mile Beach and how you can drive on it. But that's because a lot of Aussies tend to travel to New Zealand. And there is a 90 Mile Beach in New Zealand. And you can drive on the 90 Mile Beach in New Zealand. <laughs> this beach definitely has no driving on it. When we were coming along here last night, I was very excited because we both wanted to get an awesome sweeping shot of the van driving along the beach with the sunset going down and have the drone flying along next to us. And as we were driving along the entire length of beach, I was saying to Jamie, I'm like, there's no entrances for cars anywhere. Like, I don't know how the hell you'd get a car on it. So we were Googling in bed last night, like how the hell are we gonna get down here? And that's when we realized we're in the wrong bloody country. <laughs> This is how we're drying our clothes. This little vent DIY clothes drying rack. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. Under a Lee Shore steamer, which was forced to the beach here in 1881 when it began leaking soon after leaving Lake's entrance. <gasps> oh no! The iron skeleton you will see at the end of the track is all the remains of the Tranquilo. There it is. It's so weird, it looks like tree bark, but it's like a ship. I'm scared to touch it because I feel like it's just gonna like disintegrate. Quick lunch break. We're gonna pop in the back of the van and have some lunch, but this place looks a little familiar. It looks great. <laughs> so the sail down point will do ya, and it is free, but there's a grate in that. A grate, but things will get caught. It's gonna be very visual. Let's go get breakfast. Let's go get some breakfast. What a morning. <laughs> this has gone from the best day ever to spiders and shit. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> So where were we yesterday? 15 kilometer walk. Yesterday, we were here at the Sail Common Wetlands. Here or here? Over this bridge and had to go back around here to the car park. So I believe we were here. And now we're here at the very top of the walk. So Sail is all connected. It's all one. Intertwined in the great circle of life. Yes, thank you, Jamie. <laughs> It's lovely to walk around. The weather is so nice right now. 
It's like a perfect autumn day. So we're just taking it all in, watching the birds, sitting by the water. It's feeling nice and loose after my cold plunge. Yeah, um, and we here. just had some lunch, so we're feeling good. So we just read that the Sail Canal was the first canal built outside of Melbourne. So we're just like vibing in history right now, okay? And the last time I tried to do that, I got leeches. But that brings us to the end of our free camping series and I can't believe we're already at the end of it. It's been so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this series because we actually switched up how we recorded this on the back end of things and it made it far more fun for us. So I hope that yeah. really came across as well. Yeah, so let us know in the comments what was your favorite campsite or your favorite moment that we enjoyed on this free camping series. We would love to hear how you enjoyed it. Our favorite campsite for a long time has been the Grampian site, but I want to know has that changed for you? I don't know, we've explored so many cool ones. I do love the Grampians, I do love it up there. I really did enjoy the 90 mile beach campgrounds and just like being so close to the beach and just having so many options. Mm -hmm. um, but I can see it getting busy down there, so I don't know, I would have to come back to really like have that claim my top spot. Yep. But obviously I really loved our flower bag reserve, that lucky find. That's what I was gonna say. That one, bag, yeah. that one, like we haven't really spent enough time at these places for me to say that they're officially my number one. One. Mm. We only got to spend a night at some of these campsites, so I don't want to compare one night to months and months that I've spent in Lake Lonsdale at the Grampians, you know, so I'm trying to be fair in that aspect, but sure. I do see a lot of potential for like runners up and some replacing that first place spot. So it's been a really good series. I feel like we've had such good bounces, things not being booked out or, you know, getting lost. Like we've had some really good bounces like throughout this whole series. So. And we've had some unlucky moments as well. Like, obviously, we didn't get to chase waterfalls. TLC was right. How much did we spend today? We honestly only spent, like, $5. We popped into a Woolworths to get some toilet paper, and then we got some potato salad for our dinner, and that was it. Yep. So we already had, you know, fuel in the tank, so we didn't have to top up or anything. So, yeah, $5. We slept pretty much on the beach. We were one windbreak behind the beach. Yeah. What it a was win. Amazing. Yeah. We are so excited because we finalized our winter series. You guys don't want to miss this series. And I'm so excited to drop that and for you to see it. So keep your eyes peeled. And as we said before, we're going to be taking time off in between these series. So we will take like a week or two in between this series and the winter series. But we're really, really excited for this one. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. We can't wait. If you've stuck around for this entire series, thank you so much. If you haven't, you've got some catching up to do. Luckily, there is a playlist on the channel where you can watch this entire series. And as this series has been dropping, we have been clicking over to 500 subscribers. So once again, if you have stuck with the channel, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We honestly can't believe it. I know that we spoke on this earlier, but we just really, it, it's been really fun doing this. We're really enjoying it. And, you know, starting a YouTube channel can be really daunting and just overwhelming and not everyone can understand the journey. So for the people showing up for us, it means more than you know. So thank you so much for being here. I had so much fun doing the free camping series, especially off the back of the hip camp series. I was like, it's gonna be really fun to just do things for free and just find whatever is available and just see the quality of what's available. It had been such a long time since we had done any free camping because we were just loving using the hip camp app. So it really like forced us back into it, which was really fun. I thought it like was better than I expected it to be. After the time, after we finished it, I was like, that was really fun to film yeah. because we've been doing so many hip camps, which are like paid experiences on people's private land. And we generally don't love free camping. Like it's yeah. not been something that we've chased a lot of in the past. So actually after doing like... Well we did. We, we did be at Lake Lonsdale, but like... I wouldn't yeah. say we hated it. I, I would say that like once we found Hip Camp, we kind of just became obsessed with it. Yeah. This series really made us like question that. Is it much better? That's the thing. That's why I think it was better than I expected it to be. Yeah. Because I had so much fun on these free sites. I was like, Oof. like what well, you're paying for 
not yeah. much of a difference yeah. sometimes, you know? Yeah, it depends on where you go. Depends on the hip camp. So it really, yeah. yeah, I think it really opened our eyes to what is available when you really look. Like, there's so many more free camps than I thought. I don't know, I, I knew there was a lot in Victoria, but there's so many. So the series definitely exceeded our expectations. I thought that it was going to be good, but I almost enjoyed it more than the Hip Camp series. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I enjoyed it more than the Hip Camp series, which is crazy. And I think like just that little element of like, you don't know what you're gonna get, just added a little bit more fun. Mm. And I think after a summer of just having guaranteed spots and great experiences with our Hip Camps, we were ready for a little bit of a risk. Mm. with the free camping, mm. even though it's not really a risk, like... Well, you don't know if you're gonna get that spot. No, but you, you will get a spot. Get there a spot will be somewhere. something yeah, somewhere. you're gonna spot somewhere, it just might not be the one you want. And you might have noisy neighbors. There's always, you know, the downsides of everything. I know I asked you at the end of the series, but now you've had time to think about it. What was your favorite campsite? What did I say then? <laughs> you said you weren't ready to put uh, flowers I am still flowers. not. I would need to stay there longer to really like say that's better than Lonsdale because Lonsdale has delivered time and time again. You know what I mean? Like we've just consistently, except for that time when it was like Spider City. Yeah, like, that's true. That that's was true. the worst time. That was before we were on YouTube, kind of. We <laughs> attempted it. Anyway, that's not the heat over there. I really liked 90 Mile Beach. Oh yeah, that was, that was your favorite one. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like I love Lonsdale. That's that's like our go-to. That's like our baby. That yeah. you know. So I don't want to pick that one because just because it's Lonsdale, you know what I mean. I do yeah. love it. it. It will always be on my top recommendation. But as far as something like new that I've never experienced, I definitely want to go back there and see more of it. Obviously, Flower Bag. Those two were like my top two. My favorite one for this series was Flower Bag. I still like like Lonsdale more because of our history there. Yeah. But for this series, Flowers Bag was my favorite one. And my second favorite one was Lake Bar and Bay. Oh yeah, I yeah. forgot about that one. I liked the 90 Mile Beach one and I yeah. want to go back there again yeah. over summer. Um, but because of that giant windbreak, yeah. you can't see, yeah. it doesn't have a view. Yeah, that is true. But I like the access, like so I, I like the access to the beach. That's why I said I would go again. Yeah. But I did love Lake Barbie. I totally forgot about it. Because like Lake Lonza, you can't even get that close to the lake. I know. So I would love to spend a week uh -huh. in Lake Barnby yeah. and just chill. And then it's so close to the town. Actually, yeah, I really did it's like really that good, one. Isn't yeah, because it? yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so close to the town, yeah. but you feel like you're you're out of the yeah. town. And if you have a four wheel drive, there's like these back camps of Lake yeah. Barnby where you can like tuck in. I could see us spending a week there in All the right. summer, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I feel like it gets so busy. That's why I'm like. Mm. Cause you, you can park a bus there as well. Yeah, you like, can park anything there. It's too accessible to everyone. <laughs> so I think it could get very busy. Yeah. But I can, same with 90 Mile Beach. I feel like it can get very busy. And then Flowers Bag, it will fill up so quickly in busy times because yes. it's so small. Yeah. So it's like they all have their pros and cons, but I think like getting them in the perfect time, it would be... That's free camping, baby. Yeah. That's the guy. <laughs> Now, our least favorite campsite, we can't leave this out. Uh, I think it was Gunshot Valley. Oh yeah, oh, easily. I was like, Gunshot yeah, where we, the one where we crashed the drone. Yeah. So where the campsite was, even the part where you do get a good view was very boggy. So you need a four wheel drive to get there. I think people had been launching their boats off it. Um, but where we managed to stay for it. No view. view. Yeah. Four wheel drive track at the end, like corrugated road leading yeah. up to a sand road to get to it. And then the army needs to chill out. Like, <laughs> they were firing into the night. Yeah, it was a bit crazy. I don't think I would go back to that one again. Like, mm. one, because I don't think our van would be happy with that. <laughs> but two, it just, like, it just wasn't our vibe. Mm. It just wasn't our vibe. But it's someone's vibe, and you know what? I'm glad we could share it with someone that might love it. What is our top memory or favorite moment? I got a couple actually. I think I could pick something from every single one though. Yeah. What one of my favorite moments was when we jumped the fence and did the river dive. Yeah. We hung out there for like 20 minutes, half an hour afterwards. We just like slowed down and enjoyed it. So Lake Barnby, when we were having breakfast and the horses just came out. Yeah, that, was that was so special. That was really good. 
Right. And that was like to kick off the series. I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then after that was when we finished setting up at Lake Lonsdale and it was just perfect. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting there, we had the fire going, the best sunset, like no bugs perfect weather like it was warm out for some reason yeah. it felt like spring and it was just like oh. and then Lake Lonsdale was just so lush and green I was yeah. like this is amazing it was the best we'd ever seen that yeah before. and again we go there often the most. Yeah. yeah and so yeah that memory will always like stick out as well and then just doing s'mores at Flowers Bag after we didn't know where we were gonna sleep that night. Yep. And the campsites being full, and then finally finding the place, and it was amazing. And then just having s'mores at the end of the day. Like the yep. kangaroo at 90 Mile Beach. Yep. There's something from every video that we release that is going to be like a moment in my heart. Yeah. So I wanna know what your favorite moment from the series was, so let us know in the comments. Oh, the leeches. Was that your favorite moment? No. You sadistic <laughs> bastards. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> so what did we learn from this series? I learned that leeches don't just live in the water. Yes. <laughs> They're in the ground. Oh my god. I learned that the hard way. A new fear has been unlocked, okay? I am traumatized. We did this series differently to how we usually do our series in the past. It was just a like a better way of filming, a better way of YouTubing. Like it made it more enjoyable. I learned that fire lighters go off, even if you keep them in a toolbox. And Bushman's is very essential to high mosquito times. <laughs> and we learned that you cannot drive on 90 Mile Beach in Victoria. So what is next for us? A lot of you already know that we're working on a winter series and that is coming to you guys soon. We are going to take some time. I feel like we say this all the time, but I just want people to know we are taking a break. I don't want no one coming on our comments like, where's the video? It's Wednesday. By the time you're watching this, the winter series will be in the works. We're honestly in the middle of a move right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed, there's moving boxes. This room looks like a mess, so if you've been noticing that throughout this video, that's why. This is probably our last video that you will see ever in this room. Right where it all started. Goodbye, DJ Adventures Studio. <laughs> so we need to worry about our moving and worrying about trying to get some rest and trying to survive, okay? But when we come back, because it is a winter series, I can promise you guys, we are going to be getting cold in this series. If you like the cold plunge at 90 Mile Beach, then you are definitely going to want to stay tuned for our winter series. Oh, and the winter series as well. We nearly destroyed the van. Like, teaser. We're like a kilometer away. I honestly do not know if we're going to make it. Enjoy that. Enjoy mulling on that. It was nightmarish there at one point. I am traumatized. It was almost worse than the leeches. No, it was worse than the leeches. Also, just a heads up that we are going to start sprinkling in some more food related content. If you're like one of our OG people and you've been around here for a while, you know that we love food and we do food related videos from time to time. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Just giving you a heads up so you're not like, what is that? What? This isn't camping. I don't want to hear it. You're being warned now. Okay. But the next series is going to be so fun. And I just feel like they keep getting better. Me too. I'm enjoying it. It's going to be a great year. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you guys so much for watching the entire Autumn series all the way to the end. We appreciate all of you so much for coming with us on this journey. It's made it really, really fun. We hope that you guys are enjoying the videos because we think they're getting better. So we can't wait to see the winter series. And guys, we're already halfway to 600 subscribers somehow. Crazy, we were just celebrating 500. So if you're new around here, thanks for being here. We appreciate you all and we're just so excited to see this community growing. As always, if you have any campsites, food sites, anything that you think would be up our alley, definitely let us know because we are always open to suggestions. Mm -hmm. With that, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing and we will see you when we come back after our one to two week break. Bye! Bye!